been a while. I'm sorry it's been so long, but I've got a, an entire year of growing season to update you with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these different species that I've been growing. Um, down the uh, bottom here, I'm going to be displaying the species. Up here, I'm going to put the month. And uh, so you can skip through if you want, but here's a quick list of all the species I'm going to be talking about. And at the end, I'm going to give you an update on uh, a new direction for me and some exciting news. I hope you find this useful and uh, any questions or comments are welcome. Now for my beautiful bag of sweet chestnuts. These have been rooting and you can see underneath there are quite a few roots. Okay, so they are literally all sprouting in the bag. You pull them out and you've got these lovely big shoots. What I'm doing is I've got this uh, big pencil as a dibber and uh, I'm just Make a little hole like that. Putting them in. Pushing the soil in around it. And then I'll give it a little cover of soil. Uh, probably like so. And uh, that's that one done. I have potted up 59 sweet chestnuts and you can see I mean I started these uh, the weekend it's uh, last weekend now it's uh, the following Saturday and you can already see here there's uh, little shoots already wanting to come up uh, and there and there So here's a sweet chestnut, I just got out to um, see how it's doing and give it a little weed and you think, oh, it looks quite dry on top. But then if you look down the side, um, you can see there's definitely moisture in there. And you can see a lot of roots. And as I pulled it up, it's already taken root underneath in the soil. So here are my sweet chestnut now and they are doing super well. Um, they're probably, on average, about a foot tall now. Um, so now I know that you get a very high success rate of germination from sweet chestnuts. What I would do is just get a pot of soil six to eight inches deep, deeper the better, because uh, they do have a deep uh, root system, and put the nut below the soil, cover with soil about the same depth as the nut. Protect, remember to protect your nuts, my favorite motto, and you should be fine. Plant them out into about, in about one or two years time. With my silver birch seeds, uh, in January, I put them in water to soak them for 48 hours. I wouldn't use socks again, uh, try and find some types or some mesh. Then I mixed them with damp soil and put them in the fridge for six weeks. Afterwards, there was nothing. But then I put them in the house and I'll show you what happened next. So, a week on and there's a dramatic difference here with the little silver birch. Look at these. Again, I've probably left it too long. You really have to be good at timing. Um, the first signs I saw, and I should have dealt with this a couple of days ago, it was underneath. You see those little rootlets coming through? Those are the things to watch for first. So hopefully there's some ungerminated seeds in here, which will now germinate. But um, I'll give you a closer look at one or two now. Here's the bed I've prepared, um, and I watered it last night. So this has been raked down to a fine till, nice fine soil, and then I've firmed it down. And now I'm gonna spread the seed on top. And now I've got some coarse sand, which I'm just gonna gently cover these over with. That's beautiful. What I just found there, that's actually one of the uh, seed pods. You can see all the little seedlings coming out of it. Okay. Keep those seedlings moist, so I'm giving them a nice light drizzle of rain just to keep them nice and moist. So unfortunately the silver birch didn't do very well and I think that's because I didn't protect them and they dried out. Um, there's only one which I found which is down here. Um, a poor excuse of a little sapling there. I think they should be about a foot high after the first year. So knowing what I do now, 
um, if I'm going to do this again this year, which I will, um, I grab loads of seeds, follow the Forestry Commission guidance um, on how to treat them and the timings for the weeks. Um, and then as soon as it gets to that date, don't put them into room temperature, put them straight down, cover them, protect them because they're very delicate when they come up. And um, that's from birds and cats. And I wouldn't be joking if I said the cat had been using this as a litter tray, which was very nice. Lime seeds do stay on the tree all winter. So anywhere probably up to about January, you can go and collect them. So here are my tilia seeds, and these have been in treatment uh, since 26th of, 26th of February. And also, I've frozen them. I've realised there's a couple of mistakes there. First of all, I don't think I should freeze them. They should go in the fridge. Uh, I've found a resource of tree seeds online, and that gives a really useful description of what to do with tilia seeds. So they're not going to germinate like this. I need to mix them in with some compost mix with sharp sand. So I've just been digging around in my little bag of goodies here, some uh, hazelnuts, but also got some lime tree seeds. And I've just noticed the very first one, this is the first time I've ever seen this happen. Look, it's a lime tree seed. It was just burst and you can see a shoot coming out. It's so exciting. I'm gonna pop this one up and see what happens with it. A little big pop for a special new seed of um, this tilia here, lime tree. So I'm just popping them down there, covering it with about a centimetre of soil, and wait and see what happens. Sad moment. Um, I've just come to show you my tilia. This is a tilia lime seed that I collected last year, and um, unfortunately you can see he's got wilt there. So while he germinated and the little sh shoot came up. Unfortunately, he's died. All of the oak uh, acorns that I planted, they are hopefully rooting away. Um, no sign of shoots yet, but what I have noticed is naughty Mr. Squirrel has come along in a couple of cases where I think where I've left them too close to the surface found them and dug them out. So I'm gonna have to figure out which ones these are and put some more acorns in there. So I've been clearing out all the pots today just to see what I was left over with, uh, just by digging into the pots and seeing how many I can find. Unfortunately, I've only got seven. Seven left of, what, 40 or 50 that I planted. These are all the empty containers and here is the evidence that something's been in there munching away. So that's really depressing. I've got the soil left for next time. And you can see behind you now, I've got my uh, secured planting area. So last year, last autumn, this is where I planted a little acorn. And you can see that something has been in here, digging away, and it's taken the acorn. This little fella's coming up, an oak. I love it, look at him. Oh, looking good there, little oak. I'm going to protect you now. Here we've got a little oak growing. Yes, another one. Win. And it's another win for the oaks. Another gorgeous little one there growing. Beautiful. After a while, your eyes start to get adapted to them and you get to see them more easier. There's another oak coming up there. This is brilliant. Here's another win for the oaks. Although we do still have some losses where uh, the rabbits have been in here or something. Came along with me last year and look, there's Simon's little oak. No jokes. Well, this one, I protected. He's still okay down there. And I was just using a discarded tree shelter. But the other ones have not done so well at all. I can't find any of them. So here are the surviving oaks. Um, not many of them, unfortunately, because of the, uh, the attacks, the savage attacks I had earlier in the year, but they're doing okay. Um, you can see 
but they did suffer around July time, August time, this leaf mildew, which got on pretty much all of them. You can see it on most of the oaks, even the full sized ones. Um, it set them back a bit, but they're still growing. So knowing what I do now, as soon as you get your acorns, I would put them in a tub because acorns germinate so readily. They're, they're incredible, 90% um, plus chance of them germinating. So I put them in the soil, cover them again, same depth of soil cover as the nut, um, cover them with, let them secure, protect your nuts. Remember that is the biggest motto I have for you. Um, it's protect your nuts so you don't lose them all over winter and into spring. Um, and you can do that with either a fine wire mesh or by stacking your pots, um, but you need to make sure they're protected. Okay, so I'm walking along and then I see this tree waving at me. And I come across and I think, oh, look, that must be a Populus tremula, an aspen. Um, quivering aspen and so I've gone and looked across the floor and you can see across all of the ground underneath here uh, there are some uh, of these catkins with the fluffy seeds so I've collected these with um, a couple of bugs and I'll try germinating these and see how I get on. This is working on the premise of the uh, square foot method of um, growing veg. I'll cover on these. Just like candy floss. And one of these up there. So here's that bed of poplar that I um, sowed, the fluff, which um, you can probably just about see still there. Unfortunately, nothing grew. Um, I have heard it's very hard to grow poplar from seed. And here is the aspen bed, uh, Populus tremula. Unfortunately, again, nothing here. So I think next time, this year, I'm gonna try growing um, populus from cuttings. This is a witch elm. And if you can see up there, I've just gathered here some papery uh, seeds from last year's crop. And I'll have a go, look, there's plenty in there. I'll have a go at germinating these. So I've come down here the following week and this just goes to show how quick and opportunistic you've got to be with uh, witch elm seeds. Um, there were loads here last week and we're a week on we've had a strong gust or two uh, last week and it's naked apart from a little cluster I can see up there. Can you see that? Let me try and get them. But apart from that, they've all been blown away. And there we go. I'm quite happy with that. That's looking pretty good. They're all nice and evenly spaced apart. Beautiful. So here are my witch elm. And I say they because <laughs> unfortunately I've just got two of them. This one is doing really well though. I mean, this is getting on for about a foot and a half already. You can tell by their um, sandpapery leaves. That's uh, an elm. Um, it's doing really well, so I'm going to try again next year and uh, see if I get more success rate. Older, you should be able to collect these little straw bars all the way through winter, probably up to about February, March. Getting the seed out is quite easy. And then refrigerate in damp soil. So can you see there, uh, if I just dig these out and show them to you, so you can see there's one little one growing there and another little one growing there. So what I'm going to do is sow these um, over there on that bed. Wow, 
the older has been the most successful of all of my um, uh, seed beds that I've trialed. This side they've got on for about a foot tall easily and they're doing really nicely. Very, very healthy. Um, the other side, for some reason, they're not so tall. I don't know why. I need to do a bit of weeding, but uh, if I was going to do this again, I probably wouldn't change anything. This has done really well. So, look at this. Got a bit of a mixed batch here. And uh, let's check for more hazelnuts. There's one. Lovely. Nice. <coughs> now the thing you have to be careful of when you've got a bag full of seeds here is that you don't confuse them because uh, they know which way is up and down because of gravity. So these are the roots. You'll want to plant these facing down, which I will do. Uh, oh look, there's, there's more. Another one there. I think bags are easier to take your germinating seeds from the pots because with a pot you've got to empty the whole thing out. Also with bags, you can see underneath and check for any roots which have dived down to the bottom, uh, which is a useful aid. And the other thing is, um, undisruptively, you can you know, just finger through the soil uh, by just pushing them underneath the bag. So I think I've collected all of the hazelnuts there which have germinated. There they are. I'll get these potted up straight away. So when potting these, all I'm gonna do, here's a tub full of soil. Use a dibber or a pencil in my case. Get this, slide it down the hole, firm everything around, and leave it like that. I think that'll do. Here's my little uh, little bed of hazels, and you can see they're planted about two inches apart, two to three inches apart, um, and they're doing really well. Uh, these are the hazels that hadn't germinated when I put them on here. I put them in there just in case, and there's no signs of movement, so I'm going to take these away. Look, hazel trees. These guys have done incredibly well. There are some which are in pots, which are just down here. This one is about a foot and a half tall, all very healthy and quite resilient when it got uh, dry. Um, I had to water things a few times and you can see that the uh, horse chestnuts over there, they suffered, sweet chestnuts, they did okay. But these guys, the hazels did brilliantly. I mean, these are getting on for two foot tall, these ones here. Look at that, fantastic. So, advice, having grown these for a year now, would probably be uh, when you collect the nuts, most of them will float. Don't do the sinking test because most of them will float. Just over sow them in the bed or in the pots when you put them in the pots. And again, favorite motto, protect your nuts. January and uh, my horse chestnuts have been sat in the soil now since I picked them oh, about November time. And you can see that some of them are rooted. I've got quite a few beautiful horse chestnuts here which have uh, rooted. You do have to be careful when um, taking them out of your bucket. So make sure if you put them in loose soil that you just give it a bit of a shake to loosen it up and then they'll come out. Um, Cause I have broken a couple while I've been trying to take them out cause the uh, roots, while they're pretty tough, they are quite firm, they can break where they join onto the, uh, the nut here. The horse chestnuts. Now, when we had a very hot spell, a lot of these got leaf scorch. With the heat, they dried out and they do not like drying out. Um, and the other thing that they've suffered with is this stuff in there. That's called a leaf miner. So it's a miner, it digs through the leaf um, and it particularly affects horse chestnut. 
So these guys have had a tough time of things. You can see they're still budding. They still want to get on with life, but they have a hard time of things. So I'm actually not going to grow these anymore because here in East Anglia, we don't get much rain. We'll probably get about 600 millimetres, um, which isn't enough for these guys. Over in the West, they can get anywhere from a metre up to four metres of rain. And um, that, when I've been over to Wales and the Lake District this year, they're nothing like this. They'll still look very healthy. Um, and I guess because they're not suffering from drought stress, the leaf miner can't attack them so much. So um, while I'll uh, see these through, and again, they're looking really nice, you know, strong stems and buds. I'm not gonna grow any more. But if you do want to grow them, um, again, protect your nuts. They, they germinate so successfully. Um, I'd say again, 90% plus germination rate. So as soon as you get them, pop them in a container of soil or in the ground, protect them. You can see the nuts still there and cover them with the same depth of soil as the thickness of the nut. You should be fine. So I've got another exciting first here. I think that little fella down there is a hornbeam. In this uh, bag of chilled seeds, which have been in the fridge for mm, about four months, which are giant sequoia seeds, I did also put some hornbeam in there. And then I saw this little fella come out and I found this. So that's a hornbeam seed. And you can see where literally there was something in there, but it's like it's, it's wriggled out and it's there, look. So there were two in here that I found that have germinated. I'm gonna pop them up into a mix of um, uh, potting compost and sand. And several days on, the little hornbeam has dug its root in and is lifting its head up to feel the sun for the first time. So the hornbeam didn't do so well, unfortunately. Um, and I think that's probably because I treated it wrong. So now when I collect the seed, I'll put it straight into damp soil to keep it over winter. I'll put it in the fridge. Um, and then hopefully I should get a higher success rate next year. Now I believe I've got a little visitor who's watching what I'm gonna do. So here are my beech seeds, which um, I've frozen and uh, refrigerated over the winter. Um, they're still all pretty firm. I was worried that they were going mushy and I'd killed them. Yeah, yeah, liquidy. No sign of life yet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put them in here, cover them with a bit of soil. So the beech seed didn't do very well. And I think that's because when I read the manual on how to uh, chill them, um, it said chill at below zero degrees. So I froze them. I wouldn't freeze them, um, put them in the fridge, put them in soil. Um, and uh, let's hope I have more success this year, next year. Okay, so in my bag of sycamore seeds, you can see that there's definitely activity under there because we've got a couple of lot of roots popping through. So now it's a case of rooting through to see what you can find. Rooting through, I didn't mean a pun there, by the way. Uh, there you go. So you've got a nice little one there. So I've got a few of these sycamore seeds out in various stages of germination so you can see what happens. Uh, so to begin with, they just give a little root. You've got the helicopter arm or I suppose blade there and then the, like the little seed pot at the end and what happens is the root will come out of that as you can see in various stages here and then within the actual seed pod the leaves will grow and break free and unfurl and you can see later on what happens here so I guess if I was to plant this one uh, over here I'd dip a hole and then <coughs> and then Put the, uh, the root down inside so the leaves are above and then just gently firm this around like that and I'd say that'd probably do it. You can see the ones I planted up last weekend and already they're beginning to uh, start to straighten themselves. The sycamore, again another successful tree. Um, yeah the sycamores have done really really well. 
They're very easy to grow. And as you can see, they've already reached probably about a foot and a half tall. Um, the drought didn't really affect them and they did really, really well. So if I was gonna plant them again, um, you could probably just get the seed and stick it straight in the ground, protect it. Um, and uh, when it germinates, when you see the shoot come up, um, just protect the new shoots because they're very attractive to birds in the spring um, when they're looking for fresh tender shoots, when there's not much to eat, and they'll easily just nip the, the top off. So last year I dug this up, what I thought was um, a mountain ash because I had a, a rowan just behind me. Um, but it turns out this was actually uh, an ash. You can tell that by the green stem and the black tips that you get there. Um, thankfully, someone pointed this out to me on my uh, previous video, so I quickly whipped it up and uh, got rid of that. Um, so on ash, uh, you'll probably find them around your garden. Um, they grow rampantly out in wild, but um, the, they're really suffering at the moment with a disease called ash dieback and uh, moving of them it was only just recently uh, unbanned it was banned to plant these uh, in the wild so don't do ash um, leave it alone at the moment it's just having its own battle with ash dieback the redwood are doing pretty well well i say pretty well this guy's doing really well as is he but a few of them have got a little bit of dieback there i'm not sure whether that's, uh, what do they call it, damping off. Some of them, one of them is really suffering over there, but it's still growing out the side. Um, it may be because um, they've been under full sun recently. I thought that they would be okay, but um, under bright light, they suffer. So for a while, what I did is I got some um, frost fleece. In fact, there's some of it over here. And I put it over the top. This is a dirty bit, but frost fleece. So I just tied it over the top and that kept the sun off it, uh, the midday sun, and they seem to be doing okay since I've removed it a couple of weeks ago. There's quite a few of them which uh, start to show a little bit of dieback, even the nice one, nice big one over there. So um, after this video, I'm gonna recover them, even though it's now September, we're not getting full summer heat and sun, um, and see how they get on. I did have a go at um, sowing a bed of redwood. Um, because in, in plant pots, they're subject to a bit of stress, a bit of moving around. But um, in a bed, of course, it's a much more natural environment for them. So I sewed a bed here. You can see that I got, what, maybe uh, 15, 10, 15 of them up there. And I haven't lost any of them. They're all doing pretty well. Uh, there's no sign of any damping off disease. Um, so the trick will be, or the telling point will be, when I come to dig these up and plant them out, which I'll probably leave them for a couple of years uh, to see how they get on. So some general advice when you're out looking for acorns or uh, sweet chestnuts is select your tree carefully. Look for a healthy tree. And by that I mean a full rounded canopy with no dead branches protruding. Oaks at the moment, they're suffering from something called acute oak decline or chronic oak decline. And what you've got to watch for there are bleeding um, slits on the trunk. Um, just like this picture I put up here. Um, and uh, if you do see any of that, um, it, it should be reportable. So if you go on observatory, you can actually report sightings of what you suspect. Um, but if you see that, steer well clear. Don't collect anything within 200 meters of what you see. There's another thing which I've learned, which is provenance. So here in Norfolk, we're area 406 and uh, what you shouldn't do is move trees from one area to the other. Try and keep it local because uh, A, they're more adapted to the environment because they've grown up here, and B, you could be spreading more than just a, a seed or a nut. So a change of direction for me. I have found a charity called the Tree Council, and they're a national uh, network of volunteers, and uh, their volunteers are called tree wardens. So I volunteered to be a tree warden for my local parish and uh, uh, village here. So as a tree warden, uh, I get to do quite a few fun things. First of all, you get to meet like-minded people. Um, you get to propose new planting schemes. So at the moment, uh, I'm talking to the local parish council about putting some trees on the playing field. Um, 
And that's really interesting, you get to learn so much and you've also got people that you can speak to and get advice um, within the tree council, have a, 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 a local network coordinator um, and you get to meet like-minded people, go to tree planting events, um, help protect your local trees and it's been very, very good. So I'd recommend it. Um, if you want to get involved, look on the Tree Council's website and you can volunteer to become a tree warden in your area. So one of the things I'm going to be doing as a tree warden is trying to start a community tree nursery where I'm going to grow trees from seeds and nuts, um, ask people if they want to be involved, give people the opportunity to plant a tree and uh, then that will in one to many years time be able to supply additional trees to supplement the trees that the network can buy locally through their funding. I mean in the first year maybe I'll try and do 5,000 but uh, who knows. Um, but what I'll do is I will keep you updated so um, stay tuned, subscribe, um, I hate it when people say that but if you want to see more of what I'm doing um, then yeah subscribe. Um, and uh, I'll show you how this all progresses, how it grows. Um, I'll leave you with uh, five takeaway things, uh, which is fly less, buy less, grow more, love more, and uh, be awesome tree friends. So um, stay tuned and I will update you soon.